Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be covering classes and objects in C++ using a program. Object-oriented programming is centered on creating objects rather than procedures. Object-oriented programming combines data and behavior via encapsulation. Encapsulation in C++ is a mechanism of wrapping variables and methods together as a single unit. Data in an object are known as fields. Procedures in an object are known as methods or functions. Usually the variable of a class are set as privates. And then we have public setter and getter methods to modify and view the values of the variables. Data hiding is an important concept in C++. It is the ability of an object to hide data from other objects in the program. And that's because only an object's method should be able to directly manipulate its data. So we have been talking about object, but what is class? What does object have to do anything with class? In a way, a class is a blueprint that objects may be created from. Please note that a class is not an object, but can definitely be a description of an object. An object that is created from a class is called an instance of a class. For example, when we hear the word car, we immediately think about a box-like transportation machine with certain properties in an abstract form. The car class defines the fields and methods that will exist in all objects that are an instance of the car class. For example, a Toyota, or a Tesla, or a Honda. You may wonder why classes are important in object-oriented programming. Well, it's important to note that classes are used to create and manage new objects and they support inheritance, which is a key ingredient in object-oriented design and programming. Classes are a great mechanism for reusing codes. Now that we understand what classes are, let's build a class called Rectangle from a unified modeling language, aka UML diagram. The following is a UML diagram of a rectangle class. As you may already know, a UML diagram is a standard way to visualize the design of our programs which you can easily translate into an object-oriented language such as C++. For the purpose of this section, let's look at this UML diagram for a rectangle class. In this class, we're calculating the area of rectangle. The first part of the UML diagram is the class name followed by the field which are usually set as private, followed by our method or functions that are public. Usually the access modifiers are denoted as plus for public and minus for private. Variable types are placed after the variable name, separated by a colon. Method parameters are shown inside the parentheses using the same notation as variables. Method return types are placed after the method declaration name, separated by a colon. And now that we know the components, let's translate this UML diagram into a class file. Okay, so here is the header file and the class file. The bottom left portion of the screen shows the header file, which holds the class definition and the functions. And to its right is the class file, which is fully compilable, but to see the result, we have to create a main file to test it. In our class file, we have our mutators, which are the same as setters, and accessors, uh, which are the same as the getters. In other words, we're creating a blueprint for the rectangle object. Let's transfer this to a C++ IDE to better see how these two files work and communicate with each other. Let's, let's go over here. Uh, by the way, I'm using Visual Studio 2019 community version as an IDE here. Okay, a couple of housekeeping items first. The header file must be under header file right over here. I already transferred this program here, but if I was going to start from scratch, I would right click under header file and click on new. And then in this window, I would make sure that a header file is chosen and then name it, whatever you want to name it. Note that there should be no space in the header file name. Usually a short name will do, but for the purpose of this exercise, I call it rectangle header file so you can recognize it when I use it in the program. Anyway, let's look at the actual header file itself here. 
all header files should have hashtag define and if and def guards to prevent multiple inclusions. In other words, it checks to see if it's already being included in the program or not. The format convention is usually writing the hashtag indef and then the header file all in caps, whatever we named it, all in caps, and then an H at the end instead of dot H. Now you will have to type class and then the name of the class, which is programmers defined. So name it whatever you want. Remember this class name uh, because we are going to use this name to create an instance of the rectangle class in our main when we're about to test this program. Anyway, and then over here, we're going to be using private access specifiers for the fields or member variables. These are the variables we don't want to be changed. For example, when calculating an area of rectangle, we only need a length and a width. And we don't need anyone to come here and add a height or delete our length or width or any of that. So we keep these fields private. And then we keep our member functions public. Remember, this .h file or header file is the link between our class and the main file where we will be testing this program. And note that the header file must be in the same folder directory as your project file. That means the class file and the main file. They all need to be in the same project folder. Uh, now let's look at our class, our class file. This is needed for the class file. And now we will be bringing our IO stream and I'm going to be using the C standard library because I want to use the exit function. I will show you guys in a minute what that does. Now we will set the width for the rectangle object. Our first function is our set width function. And we're using the scope resolution operator to link it to the correct class, which is rectangle class. If you remember, the set width function was a void function. So we start by writing void, and then rectangle, and then a scope resolution, then the name of the function, and of course the function parameters. This function is setting the width, and here we're doing an input validation to make sure the user inputs a positive number because you can't calculate an area with negative number. Over here, we're using the exit function, and that's why I brought the C standard library up there. If we don't use the exit function, it'll give the error message, but it'll still run the program, which is not what we want here. So we will do the same here again for length. So it's going to be void, rectangle, scope, resolution, and then set length. And then in parentheses, we have our double length, which is our parameter. And then we're going to do another input validation, then exit, and then moving on. Now we will be using our accessors uh, or getters to get the value and return it. Again, our functions was double uh, get width. So we will write double and then the name of the class, and then the scope resolution, which is going to link it to link this class to the function get width, um, which will simply return width. We will do the same thing for length, and then we calculate the area of the rectangle, which will be width times length, um, and we can simply put it in a return statement. We don't need to allocate any variable for it. Okay, now let's look at our main to test this class. In our main, first and foremost, again, we have to include our .h file. Then we will define an instance of our rectangle class. Remember when I said, remember the name of this class? Here it is. So the name of the class was rectangle. So we're going to be using rectangle in here. And then we're going to give it a name. In this particular case, I called it my rectangle. You can call it whatever you want. At this point, we need to create our local variables for the width and the length to be passed as an argument to our functions. I'm going to simply call it w and l. And then I'm going to ask the user to input the w and the l, which is the width and the length. Uh, by the way, it's set W and set field here is just to make my output look pretty and easy to read. It has nothing to do with classes, but it's always nice to have a nice output. I will use the instance of the rectangle class, which was made up there, my rectangle, uh, that we created it. And then I use the dot operator to connect it to the function set with. 
and we'll pass the width we got from the user input as an argument to this function. I will do the same thing again for length. It's going to be my rectangle dot set length, and then I'm passing uh, the length as an argument. And now let's print the result, and of course the area. In the print statement, I will have uh, then again all of these set w and all of this just make my output look pretty. I'm going to have my rectangle, which again is the instance of the rectangle class I made, and then dot get width and another one get length. I'm writing these out because I want to print out what the user inputted as the length and the width. It's just a nice way to say you entered this, and then here is the uh, area now. And then I'm going to be printing out the area, which again, I'm going to be using my rectangle dot get area, uh, which remember how we multiply width times length, and uh, it's just going to be the area. And then we're going to be done with the program. Okay, now let's run this program and see what would be the output. So running this program, here's my output window. I'm going to put some random numbers in here. And over here, it's going to calculate the area for me. All the stars that you see over here is for the set Ws and set field that we put in here to make the program look more readable. I'm going to run the program again using negative numbers now. So I'm going to put negative random numbers and over here it's going to tell me that it is invalid input but it still is going to run the information and that's because right over here in the class file I had commented the exit out if I get rid of this right now and then rerun the program I'm going to go to main again and rerun the program now it should only give me the input validation message that says it's a negative number and it's not going to calculate the rest of it and this is what we want right now in this program this will conclude this video tutorial i hope this video tutorial helped you understand classes and objects in c plus plus better